And he is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, he can live by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Let's say that again. And he is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. Yeah. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, he can live by glory. And I Just out of your heart, just begin to declare that today. You first love me. Yes, Lord, we bless you. Yes, Lord. Praise your holy name. Magnify you today, Lord. We give glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Come on, let's bless the Lord here today. Come on, let's exalt and magnify the Lord. 
Come on, it's okay to celebrate just a little bit here today. Come on, we're here to celebrate the goodness and the mercy, the awesomeness and the glory of our God. Come on, to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all that is seen and unseen. Almighty God, we exalt Him in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to join hands one with another here today. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. May God's power and anointing of His Holy Spirit flow into your life in a supernatural and powerful way. May you be strengthened, encouraged, uplifted and edified built up in jesus name may there be an anointing upon you to walk in victory to walk in triumph to overcome all the days of your life may every weapon that's come against you may it fall to the ground may every mountain that's risen in your life May it crumble in Jesus' name. I loose an anointing that calls you to prevail no matter what comes your way. In Jesus' name, you're more than a conqueror. You're created to win. In Jesus' name. Now stretch your hands out towards our city. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we begin to pray and bless our city today. And Lord, today we plead your blood over this city. And today we speak to the powers of darkness. They will try to come and cause disruption. They will try to cause racial tension and civil unrest and all manner of wickedness and hostility. We rebuke you. We bind you in Jesus' mighty name. And we say you will not prevail in your endeavors in the name of the Lord. But Lord, on the contrary, we release a move of God that would flow into every street, into every home, and touch every family member. I pray deliverance would come from those that are bound, oppressed, and tormented in Jesus' mighty name. May there be an open heaven in this city. May the glory of God rest upon this city in Jesus' name. Now today, Lord, we bless our nation. And Lord, we pray. Come on, pray with me here today. Lord, we begin to pray for our nation. And Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would move by your spirit all across this land. We pray today, Lord, from the north to the south, from the east and to the west, there would be a mighty move of God that would sweep across this nation. There would be a spirit of repentance that would come upon this land. The convicting powers of the Holy Spirit would come like a blanket and people would begin to cry out to you, begin to seek you, and begin to turn to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless this nation and may this once again be one nation under God in Jesus' mighty name for the glory of God. Now lay your hands on yourself. Now begin to prophesy to your body. Come on, begin to prophesy today. Father, we prophesy health and wellness and wholeness and strength today. We prophesy we're not going to be weak, sickly, or feeble. But Lord, we prophesy we're going to walk in strength and wellness and wholeness all our days. Cancer, you're never coming into our bodies. We're not going to have a heart attack, a stroke, or an aneurysm, but I declare today, Lord, our youth is being renewed like the eagles for the glory of God. Now prophesy to your finances. Come on, prophesy to your finances. Father, in Jesus' name, we prophesy to our finances. We prophesy, Lord, this is a season of increase and abundance that's coming into our life. I prophesy, Lord, we're not going to lack for any good thing. I prophesy, Lord God, we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're going to lend and not borrow. That we're always going to have all sufficiency and all things. And we're never going to lack for any good thing. I prophesy we're living under an open heaven. 
Blessings are being poured out. We cannot contain. We prophesy the devourer is rebuked in Jesus' mighty name. We prophesy debt and lack is under our feet. And we prophesy abundance, abundance, abundance. Come on, let's shout. Come on, prophesy abundance. Prophesy abundance. Come on, let's bless the Lord here. Come on, let's celebrate just a minute. Let's thank God. This is the greatest hour of breakthroughs, of supernatural manifestations of His power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You receive that here today? Thou receive that. I can sense something's happening. I can sense things are changing. I'm going in a new direction. God's taking me to a place I've never been. In Jesus' name. That's what's happening to you for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't you turn around and look that person in the eye and say, Get ready, change is coming. You may be seated. God bless you, ushers, if you would begin to distribute the communion. God bless you, Pastor Chad, as you come. Blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. Let me say that again. For we being many are one bread and we are one body. Somebody say we're one body. Aren't you glad that in him there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither male nor female, neither slave nor, nor free? There's no racist nationalities, ethnicities. We are all one in him. Somebody shout, we're one. We are one in him, for we are all partakers of that one bread. There's a name for that one bread. Can somebody tell me his name? His name is Jesus. And in John chapter number 6, in verse 32, Jesus said this. Here's what the one bread said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gave you that true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and gives life unto the world. He came to give us life. Aren't you glad for life today? The very next verse, John wrote this. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Evermore give us more of you. How we love you. How we adore you. How we worship you. We love you because you first loved us and gave yourself for us. We are one in Him, and there is one body today, and we are that body together. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. If anybody's waiting on communion, lift your hand. 
and an usher will make sure you've been served. Praise God. And we say here that this is an open communion. You don't have to be a member of this church to partake of the Lord's Supper with us, but that you be part of the body of Christ and have Jesus in your heart. That's all it takes. So right now, let's discern our hearts and say, Lord, if there's anything in me that doesn't need to be in me, get it out of me right now. I repent before you. I confess it. Those things known and even those things unknown, I ask you to forgive me. I want to be part of your one body. I want to be one in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Praise the Lord. Order your copy of the Family Roots Bible during Black History Month and pay only $39.99 plus shipping and processing. I hold in my hands the Family Roots Bible. This is one of the most extraordinary Bibles you've ever seen. I help put it together with a team of people, over 230 pages of really the reason people of color have risen. It hasn't been education alone. It hasn't been because of politics, but it's been because of this book. It's been because of the church and because of prayer. Order your copy of the Family Roots Bible during Black History Month and pay only $39.99 plus shipping and processing. I would like for everybody to have this Bible. It has the history of the blacks, such as myself, who grew up in a segregated country like Wheeler, Alabama. I want you to know that this Bible is the Word of God. You need this Bible in your home, not only for salvation, but you need this Bible because it is the Word of God and it do have the history of the blacks and the slaves who have struck it down through the years to get where they are today. And if you call now and use your major debit or credit card, we will send you the all-new CD, The Best of Black Gospel, Volume 1 and 2, as a special free gift just for ordering during Black History Month. Call now and ask for this King James Bible with over 200 pages of facts and pictures of the struggle and rise to prominence of African Americans in the last 250 years. Operators are standing by, so call now. to say with me out loud, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. This is the mighty Word of God. Today I shall hear the Word of God, and faith shall rise in my spirit, and nothing shall be impossible to me. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of 2 Chronicles. In 2 Chronicles, I want to begin reading in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 1. 2 Chronicles 21. Would you say that please? 2 Chronicles 21. This is the story of Jehoshaphat, one of the great kings of Israel. And as he was confronted with a great army, an army that would destroy his country. God gave him directions. It says, And it came to pass after this time that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them others besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. Behold, they be in Hazaron Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast 
throughout all Judah. In verse 13, it goes on to say, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. So this fast, he called, was a fast that God had to intervene or they were going to be destroyed. And they brought their children, which in those days, the children didn't have to fast. If you were sick, you didn't fast. If you were first married, you did not fast. And if you were elderly and weak, you didn't have to fast. But this was not the case. He said, all those chips are off the table. Everybody fast. And I would imagine even their puppy dogs fasted because this was an emergency. Now, I'm sharing this today because the key scripture that is in this chapter is chapter 20, verse 15. This is year, the year 2015, and the same uh, demonic powers that they were facing are the same identical demonic powers and situations that has come against us. The groups from Syria, from Amman, <clears throat> from Mount Seir, which were the uh, children of Esau, uh, Jacob's uh, twin brother that wanted to kill him. Uh, from Moab, which were Lot's children. They all had risen up. This would be like today ISIS in Syria and Iraq and Jordan. And all these nations that now have wanted to destroy Christians. This past week in Boko Haram, the uh, terrorist uh, there in Nigeria uh, destroyed 2,000 people in a village. That was a Christian village. There were children in that village. There were fathers, and they totally massacred them. They have destroyed 12 1,349 Christians had been killed by Boko Haram, just, just them. ISIS has killed uh, 10,000 over 700 uh, Christians. Many have been nailed to telephone poles because of their faith. And so now this same demonic power that has stirred up the terrorists in Paris, that has stirred up them in, in uh, Australia. All of that is now going to focus on the West. I believe in every major American city, there are sleeper cells. There are people that have extremist views just as those young men did in Paris. And so the, if this was an ever a time that we need to fast and join together in faith, and asking God's direction and God's protection, now is the time. Would you say that with me? Now is the time. Jesus said, when you fast. Well, when do you fast? Well, now is the time that you fast. And so he called a fast. And in that fast, God raised up a young man who literally was a prophet. It says in verse 17, uh, it says, actually, in verse 14, it says, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he began to prophesy, and in verse 15, he said, Thus saith the Lord upon you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Would you say that with me? For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. And I have a word for every person here in 2015. The battle is not yours, but the battle is God's. And then God spoke to them and God gave them a plan. I believe that everyone in this room, God's going to give you a plan. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit is going to give you direction this year. And in that plan, God spoke to them to take their worshipers and their praisers, because this was a spiritual battle, and put them in front of their army. Now, let me just say this. David, David had his mighty men, 
And those uh, mighty warriors were not his praisers and worshipers. There was a difference. The praisers and worshipers, they had tambourines. They were singers. They played uh, glorified harps, which were guitars. And uh, they would dance with streamers. But his warriors were different. They had scars on their face. They uh, had tattoos on their arm. I mean, that was a rough bunch. It's like uh, going to a real good academic school. You've got your scholars, and then you've got your football team. And you got both groups there. Well, the praisers went before the army. And the Bible says that when they begin to sing and praise, it says the Lord sent ambushments. And that word means angels of God went before them. And the enemies were smitten. And you begin to read about the Moabites and the Ammonites and, and those from Mount Seir. They rose up and they began to kill one another until every person was slaughtered. Now, in those days when you went to war, there weren't banks and there weren't ATM machines. There, there wasn't anyone to protect your family. So a soldier, when he went to battle, he took all of his cattle. He took all of his money. He had servants and that would uh, go with him. He had his wives that would travel with him. So you might have an army of 200,000 men, but the support group might be into the millions of that 200-man army. And that army has uh, great wealth and great millions and perhaps hundreds of millions of dollars because it represents their conquest. And so here is a million plus people and God sent his angels and stirred up confusion amongst them and they begin to fight against one another. And so when Jehoshaphat and his army came upon them, it says here in verse 25, it says, Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them and they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they had stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. It was so much, it took them three days. Three is the number of God, which meant it was supernatural. It was a supernatural blessing of God. They loaded up the van. They loaded up the 150. It had so much gold and jewels. They made one trip. They came back the next day, made a second trip. They made a third trip and still couldn't get it all. That's the abundance of God, how God blessed them. Now you say, Pastor, did God bless everybody in Israel that, that way? No, he didn't. Because there were some who didn't believe in what they said. There were some that didn't want to participate. Just like some people don't participate in a fast. And so they didn't participate, and they missed out on the blessing. And so back in verse 20 of the 20th chapter, he says, Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established, and believe in his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. I declare today by the word of the Lord that as we fast and we pray, God's going to prosper us, and God's going to bless us this year. There are things that are going to happen that will be supernatural in your business. God is going to elevate us. When the Bible says, when ye fast, it says, the Father who seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Now, every reward that comes upon you, whether it's a new home, whether it's a better job, whether it's your children getting a scholarship, almost all of those blessings it requires finances. It involves money. It involves uh, more than what you've had. And God's in the business of multiplying his blessings upon you just like he did upon these. It was so much that they couldn't carry it back. It took them three days to get the blessings back, the gold and the silver. And God wants to bring that kind of blessing upon his people in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, would you say amen? amen. Now I want to share something today that I feel God 
is stirring within us. Number one, we must be led by the Holy Spirit. If there's ever a time that we need to have a sensitive ear to hear God's voice, now is the time. We had a friend from Texas, and his wife was on a fast, and God spoke to her and said that uh, your husband, uh, the devil, is going to try to kill him. He worked in the oil fields. And uh, she told him, she said, today you'd be very careful. said, I had a, a vision, and in that vision, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that went down into the ground, that built, bit, the top of it broke, and uh, it got jammed up there, and uh, you went up there to try to, to get it loose, and it collapsed and it killed you. So that day, he went to work, and as they were drilling, that framework where, that supported all of that got jammed. The cable got jammed. And his boss said, I want you to get up there and get that loose. He said, no. He said, my wife had a dream and she warned me today. He said, I'm not going to do it. And so another guy, he cursed him and he says, well, I'll do it. And he climbed up there and that rigging collapsed and that man was killed. A number of years ago, we had in our church a, a couple that... Uh, uh, she was fasting on this 21-day fast. Her husband had an appointment in Detroit, Michigan. He was scheduled to fly out that Monday morning. And she told him, she said, Tommy, says, you're not to, you're not to fly that on, this, on that trip. He said, why? He, she said, you take that afternoon flight. So he rescheduled his flight. That plane crashed in Ohio. And every person on board was killed. During that same fast, we had a man in our church who worked on uh, these tele, uh, television towers. He built and constructed uh, towers. He built our tower. And he had gotten a contract with Trinity Broadcasting to build a station for Trinity in Fiji. And so while he's on this fast, he flies to Australia and the plane was delayed. And when he got to Australia, he missed his connecting flight to Fiji, and that flight only went three times a week. And that flight that he missed crashed, and there was only one survivor. It was a child. Paul Crouch got on television and said, Our engineer that was building the television station in Fiji died today. There was great mourning. And uh, he caught that flight a couple of days later. And when he showed up, they thought a ghost had showed up because they had thought he had died. But God protected them. It was through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe God knows how to speak to you and God knows how to protect you in Jesus' name? The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 13, they were in the church of Antioch. And they were fasting, and God said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them to do. And then as they fasted again, God began to give them direction. And they began to go forth. And in every church, every church was established through fasting and through prayer. In the book of Revelations, chapter 12, somebody say, I've read Revelations 12. Hold up your hand if you've read that, uh, Revelations 12. You may not remember it, but you've read it. Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, Satan knows that his days are numbered. And so in the last day, he comes with great, with great uh, attacks upon the people of God. I'm here to declare to you, those days are these days. And Satan has, has sent his, his most powerful demon imps. And now they have come to bring great trouble Upon the Christians, I believe in the days to come, there's going to be a marked difference between those who are led by the Spirit of God and those who are not led by the Spirit of God. Years ago, Margaret and I traveled to South Bend, Indiana. We preached for a great man of God there by the name of Lester Summerall. That meeting went for one month. And Brother Summerall told me about when he was a young man, how the war was going on, and he went to... 
went to Alaska to hold a revival. It was during World War II. And there were hecklers that stood up in his meeting and, and tried to disrupt the meeting. And then afterwards, he met with those hecklers, and the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, these are German spies that are sent to bring great trouble here in this city. And so he went to the FBI, and he said, I've had these hecklers in my meeting, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me. They were spies. They were German spies. So the FBI, they, they uh, came to the meeting. And they begin to get these men's names. And this was a, these were the leaders of a spy ring that had been sent to, to cause uh, trouble in Alaska. They were planning to blow up several facilities there. But God used Lester Summerall and these men were arrested and they were captured before they did any harm. I believe the Holy Spirit can direct us and guide us. So we must be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I've been praying that God would make me sensitive to hear the voice of God. Secondly, this is a time that God wants to release the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to the Lord. I heard a fellow talking about the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. I said, seven? I said, there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, but he left out tongues and interpretation of tongues. I thank God for all the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Can I hear an amen? amen? And God wants to release the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit into every person here in the name of Jesus. You know, many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but it's been a long time since you led anybody to Christ. It's been a long time since you cast out any devils, since you got anybody healed. And what you need to do is have the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit stirred inside of you. You know, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, stir up the gift of God that is within you. And what fasting does, it begins to stir up those gifts of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that we're to, to covet earnestly the best gifts. We're to desire the gifts of healing and the working of miracles. How did Jesus desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Did he sit in a chair and say, oh, I want this, I want these gifts to operate in my life? No. He fasted for 40 days. And when you begin to fast and you begin to pray, you stir up that power of the Almighty within you. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Years ago, I went to, I went to Jamaica to preach. I was a, a lot younger and a lot skinnier in those days. And I remember we went there in this church and the pastor was uh, Brother Huckerby. Brother Huckerby had come from England. His father was a Methodist preacher, and he uh, had a brother that had been uh, robbed and killed uh, by some blacks there in Jamaica. So he became very full of hatred towards people of color. He became so uh, racist that uh, he didn't want to have anything to do with any black person. And God saved him miraculously. And when God saved him, he took all the hate out of him and put love in his heart. And so he became a missionary and he went to Jamaica. He built over 50 churches. And then while he was up in the mountains preaching, he got malaria. And there was a black nurse that came and ministered to him and really saved his life. And he fell in love with her and he married her. And they built a church there in Kingston. And then when he came to the United States to try to raise money for the work there, he itinerated down in Alabama and in Mississippi and some of the southern states. And there was so much racism there, his wife was not accepted. So she went back to Jamaica and she became full of hatred and offense and she decided she wanted to divorce her husband. So she left Brother Huckerby, and she took up with a policeman, and she said, we must kill my husband. So one night the policeman pulled him over in his car, and when he got out of the car, this policeman stuck a gun to his head, and he pulled the trigger, but none of the bullets would work. And when this happened, the policeman ran and he fled. And then two weeks later was Brother Huckerby's birthday. 
So he woke up that morning and there was a birthday cake that was at his doorstep. He thought some of the people in the church had brought a cake to him, but really his wife had prepared his favorite cake and put enough arsenic in it to kill a horse. And he became very ill, but uh, they took him to the hospital and they found he had been poisoned by the arsenic, but he lived. And now he invited me to come and preach at his church. It had been a large church at one time, but now they had about 100 people there. There were more empty seats than there were people. And I preached that night, and when I concluded my sermon, a lady who was sitting on the front row got up, and she came and began to come up on the, on the platform. And I went over to her, and I said, uh, can I help you? And she said, I have walked 40 miles to be here at this service, and I've been sent here to kill you. She was a member of the voodoo cult. There were scars all over her arms where they would uh, cut and they would bleed and she would drink that as communion to the devil. And uh, when she told me that, I said, well, you can't kill me. Why, if God were to open your eyes, you would see two of the largest angels protecting me. And uh, you, go, you go back there and sit down on the front row. And so she turned around and she sat down on the front row and about that time, the singers were singing, oh, the blood of Jesus. And those demons don't like that blood. And suddenly she jumped up, she began to scream, and she charged me. But it was like she ran into an electric wire. And she suddenly stopped and turned, and she began to run right out the back of the church. And when she did, one of the big mamas of the church stepped out into the middle aisle. She looked like a middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. She tackled that woman. She sat on her and began to pound her into the uh, floor, saying, come out, come out, come out. And I went back there and I said, now, nah, you can't beat those devils out. You got to cast them out in the name of Jesus. And we began to pray over that woman. And uh, she began to scream. And I remember people began to look into the windows from the neighborhood. And the demons began to come out of this woman and the stench was so terrible, it made you gag. But God delivered that woman. And the next night there was about 200 visitors that came to the service. And the next night there was another uh, great multitude that came so you couldn't even get in the church. They were lined up along the walls of that church. And I began to proclaim what you need is the baptism of the Holy Spirit so you can cast out devils and you can heal the sick. And there was a girl there about 12 years of age and she had come visiting and I remember I went to her and I laid hands on her and I prayed for her and God filled her with the Holy Spirit. It, the people were slain all over that building. And as Margaret and I, this uh, just yesterday, uh, we were in Nashville at the World Conference and a man came up to me and he reminded me of that meeting. He said, my wife was that 12 year old girl. She got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and God called her into the ministry that day. And he said, now I pastor a church in New Jersey. He said, I said, is your wife with? He said, no, but I'm gonna call her on the phone. And he called her on the phone and I talked to her in New Jersey. What, what made the difference? was the power of the Holy Ghost in her life. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. What I'm talking about is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And it's, it's being stirred through, the, through this time of prayer and fasting. So number one, you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Number two, you've got to be uh, stir up the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And then the third thing I want to share with you is you must understand God's given you power over demons and devils. There's no weapon formed against you that will prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you, you shall condemn. Or in other words, no, that will not happen in the name of Jesus. If a tongue rises against you, you have cancer. No, I'll not have cancer in the name of Jesus. If a tongue rises within, with, by the devil, you're going to go broke. You're going to lose it all. You have the power to repeal that in the name of Jesus. No, 
That will not happen. No, my son will not die of drugs. No, we're not going to get a divorce. We're going to make it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they're not even natural. But they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Raise your right hand. Say in Jesus' name, I have power over demons of poverty. I have power over demons of cancer and diabetes and drug addictions. God's given me power over all the works of the devil. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? In the Bible, there's a story of Esther. She lived in a time when Satan had planned to destroy every Jew on the face of the earth. There was a man by the name of Haman. He was so demon-possessed, and he had gotten favor with the king. And so there was a day that the Jews were to be exterminated, and he went to a witch doctor, and the witch doctor even told him the day to do it by the casting of lots. There were more Jews under the authority of Haman and the Persian Empire than there were under the times of Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler had a third to a half of the Jews under his regime. But the Persian Empire had 100% of the Jews under their authority. And God raised up a young girl by the name of Esther. Esther called for a three-day fast with her uncle and with the Jewish people and also the handmaidens. The Bible says that even their animals fasted for three days without food or water. And then God gave her a plan. Haman was exposed and on the gallows that he had sought to, to hang Mordecai, Esther's uncle. He and his family was hanged. And God turned what was meant for bad to a great blessing for the Jews. The Jews were elevated and the Jews prospered greatly in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lord. A number of years ago, I was in West Virginia and I was preaching at a, a beautiful church. It's right on the interstate. And that pastor had just completed a building program. Uh, they had, were in debt seven and a half million dollars. And God gave me a word for that pastor. I called him out and I said, Pastor, the anointing of God is going to be on you. There's going to be miracles that happen. God is going to turn this church into a New Testament miracle church. And as a sign to you, God's going to do a miracle in your own home. And it's going to happen very quickly. Unbeknownst to me or to anyone, anyone in that church and even anyone that were cousins or family members. They had a 16-year-old boy, and that boy was very gifted, very talented, but he couldn't control his bladder. There hadn't been a night since he was born that he didn't wet the bed. He had no control over it. He had to wear those, those uh, uh, a, a diaper. He had never been able to go and spend the night with his cousins. He had never been able to go to summer camp. He never could take a shower in uh, the school because of the diapers he wore. And they went home and they said, we believe that miracle is for our son. But that night he wet the bed. And they said, God, you said there was going to be a miracle in our family. And a few nights passed, and for the first time in 16 years, he didn't wet the bed. And then he went almost three days and he didn't wet the bed. And then each week it got better. And by Easter, he never wet the bed again. Amen. Listen, that was a big thing. Today, uh, he has signed a contract with Columbia Records. He was able to get a full scholarship. He went away to college. He would have never have been able to do that unless God had have healed him. And then he said, I felt like the Lord wanted me to go on a fast. And I decided to fast until our church was paid off. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to fast like this. And the Lord gave him a specific time frame. It was a one hour time frame and said, you can eat 
during that time frame. It was one hour. He said, I fasted for one year and one month, and our church was totally paid off. Seven and a half million dollars. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap in the name of Jesus. God wants to stir the power of the Holy Ghost in this church. I feel like the Lord spoke to me that he wants to make this a no cancer zone. That more people would be healed of cancer than we've ever seen in the name of the Lord. And one of the things that happens when the Holy Spirit begins to move and you begin to fast, the Holy Spirit will speak. I don't ever remember over hundreds and hundreds of fasts that the Lord did not speak to me when I fasted. It stirs up the gift of prophecy. And if you're here today and you have the gift of prophecy, you have prophesied, or you've given a message in tongues or interpretation, I want you to stand up right now because God wants to begin to stir a new anointing that's in the prophetic. Fact is, I want you to come right down here to the front. Come down here close. Come down here, gather down here. If you are here and you say, Pastor, I have never prophesied, but I have wanted to prophesy, and I have asked God to stir that within me, I want you to come down here also. I want you to come. I want you to come down here. Hallelujah. Gather in close so there'll be plenty of room. If you're here and you say, Pastor Bob, I feel like God has an anointing on my life to heal the sick. And I, I, I just feel like there's an anointing there. And, and maybe you, you, uh, you've not had the opportunities or that gift has not been stirred in you in a long time but you want that gift to be stirred within you. I want you to come down here also. Come quickly in the name of the Lord. Gather in close, gather in close, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I sense the anointing and the stirring of the Holy Spirit even here right now. Hallelujah to the Lord. I sense that God's getting ready to touch young people and children in the name of the Lord. This is a time, this is an hour for God to move mightily. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Laura Facunley, I want you to come, come up here. Laura, Laura came from Nigeria. She was in medical school there in Nigeria, then came here and went to medical school here. She has a practice. There's a real anointing on her life. Her and her husband, they are pastors of the International Church. And even though she's a medical doctor, the gifts of healing and the working of miracles are in her life. And Laura, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer that would stir up the gifts of healing here today. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you feel like there's a gift of healing that God wants to stir. Hold your hand up. Keep it raised. Laura, I want you to pray in the name of Jesus. Let's just continue to bless the Lord. This is a special fast. This is a period of of great miracles you know our senior pastor is right on on the money on this i woke up this morning singing about grace and our sister sister jamie sanders came and sang about grace my husband and i just in bed we were singing about the grace of god it tells me that there already there there's the stirring of the gifts of the holy ghost because when you have already received a message and then you have a message of confirmation at the beginning of this year, I received the message of victory. I think I shared it that this is our year of victory. It's a year in which we shall bring home our captivities, double, triple, hundredfold, and that's what Pastor just pre preached about in Second Chronicles chapter 20. God is calling us. We just need to step out in boldness. We need to come and operate in the Holy Ghost. Be sensitive. When the Lord leads you to preach and uh, to pray, go ahead and pray. Let me share with you briefly and we will pray. In my practice, you know, with, with all the restrictions you have, you really cannot talk about Christ. I go in there, I pray for wisdom, 
my, my, my prayer is always to be the best and to excel. To excel as, as a Christian. I don't believe in a mediocre Christian doctor. I believe in an excellent Christian doctor. And I thank God for that testimony. I thank God that God has built my practice. As you can tell, I'm an immigrant with, with an accent, but God has built it. And my husband can testify with that. When they picked some of the top endocrinologists in the city, they, I was one of them. All glory to God. Not to boast about myself, but all glory to God. Because that is our testimony. But people would come in. And one lady came in one time. I had not shared. She had seen me for a while. And in one of my rooms, um, actually another patient had given me that gift on our life being a fragrance she had always used the other room as I walked in and I said how are you doing today she just started sobbing she said I knew there was something about you I said why are you crying she said I knew it I knew it I didn't know what it was I knew there was something you have the Holy Ghost you that you are a Christian I said yes I'm a full I'm a Christian full-fledged and she wept and she sobbed my life has been different that is what And one of the things that happens when the Holy Spirit begins to move and you begin to fast, the Holy Spirit will speak. I don't ever remember over hundreds and hundreds of fasts that the Lord did not speak to me when I fasted. If a tongue rises against you, you have cancer. No, I'll not have cancer in the name of Jesus. If a tongue rises within with by the devil, you're gonna go broke. You're gonna lose it all. You have the power to repeal that in the name of Jesus. No, that will not happen. No, my son will not die of drugs. No, we're not gonna get a divorce. We're gonna make it in the name of Jesus. This CD teaching from Dr. Bob Rogers also includes a time of miracle prayer and more. Don't miss out on the service that changed lives forever. The Power of the Holy Spirit on CD is available now when you call 1-888-613-6080 or visit us online at bobrogersministries.org. Call now and we will include as a special gift to you the DVD from this miracle service. Call, write, or go online today and ask for your copy of The Power of the Holy Spirit. Offer number PHS1 from Bob Rogers Ministries. Join Pastors Bob and Margaret Rogers on a trip of a lifetime to the Holy Land this summer. This trip will change your life as the Bible comes alive like never before. Walk in the footsteps of Jesus and see the holiest sights on earth where Jesus died and rose again. Plus, be baptized in the Jordan River. Space is limited on this all-inclusive trip to the land of the Bible, July 20th through August 1st, 2015. Call now for more information or visit bobrogersministries.org for detailed information on how you can visit the Holy Land.